Metroid Dread is just around the corner, and your YouTube subscription feed is likely already swimming in reviews. But I know I speak for many of us when I say that I'm doing my best to avoid major spoilers. However, I'm still extremely hyped for this game, so I've decided to turn my attention away from the product itself for now and towards the talented people who made it. Mercury Steam Entertainment has appeared on the radar of many Nintendo fans over the past few years, and seems to be set to become for 2D Metroid what Retro Studios is for 3D Metroid. So I invite you to join me as we take a moment to learn a little bit more about the people making what may very well be one of the most important games in the history of the Metroid franchise. I'm John Reardon, you're watching NWR-TV. This episode of Know Your Developers, we explore Mercury Steam Entertainment. The history of Mercury Steam begins in 2002. Located in Madrid, Spain, it was founded by former employees of Rebel Act Studios. Their first official release was American McGee Presents Scrapland, a third-person action-adventure game set in a sci-fi universe, with over-the-top characters and pretty impressive visuals for 2004. Their next major release would be Clive Barker's Jericho in 2007, which was a horror-themed first-person shooter. Both of these titles received mixed reviews, hinting at the potential and ambition behind the studio, but not quite managing to catch on. That is, until they began working with one of gaming's most well-known IPs, and no, it's not time for Metroid just yet. Around the time Jericho released, Mercury Steam began working with Konami on pitches for a new Castlevania game. Konami was interested in rebooting the series, but wasn't sure how to go about it. At one point, Konami began to get cold feet and proposed that Mercury Steam's game might work better as an original IP instead, that is, until producer David Cox showed Lords of Shadow to the senior staff at Konami, including one Hideo Kojima, and the project was instantly put on the fast track to being the next Castlevania title. Kojima himself would ultimately team up with Mercury Steam to help them on the project. As a result, Mercury Steam would gain their first bit of major notoriety as the developers behind this modern take on Castlevania. The reception to Castlevania Lords of Shadow was largely positive. It diverged heavily from the iconic Metroidvania formula that the series had been known for since the PS1 and Saturn release of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. But this new 3D adventure hack and slash that took heavy influence from the God of War series seemed to be what many people at the time wanted. With the success of Lords of Shadow, Konami quickly greenlit two sequels, Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate, which released in 2013, and Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, which released in 2014. Both games represented, to varying degrees, a desire to take what had been done in Lords of Shadow and try to reinstitute a bit more of the Metroidvania DNA. While neither game reviewed quite as well as the original Lords of Shadow, the 3DS entry, Mirror of Fate, did set Mercury Steam on the path to their modern role. Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate, which has a name that's simply too long, was directed by Jose Luis Marquez and sought to blend 2D Castlevania with the Lords of Shadow universe. It featured impressive visuals on the 3DS, and while the difficulty was low and some critiqued elements of the world design, it was still an attempt to bring Castlevania back to being a true 2D Metroidvania. As the Lords of Shadow series drew to a close, the developers at Mercury Steam couldn't get the thought of Metroidvania out of their heads, and having already worked on the series from which the second half of that genre is derived, they set their sights on the first half. Mercury Steam began work on Metroid prototypes to show Nintendo. We don't know exactly how many of these there were, but two major ones have come to light over the years. First reported by Liam Robertson at Nintendo Life in 2015, one pitch seems to have taken influence from the Metroid Prime series and was played in the first person. The player would have been able to control Samus along with seven other hunters, an idea that likely spawned from Metroid Prime Hunters on the Nintendo DS. It was intended both as a Wii U and 3DS game, however given what we now know about the Metroid series at that time, it isn't hard to surmise why this pitch may have been rejected. Nintendo at this time was likely already working with Next Level Games on Metroid Prime Federation Force for the Nintendo 3DS, which would release in 2016. 
and it's a game that shares some similarities with Mercury Steam's proposed title. Their second known pitch, however, worked out a bit better. Mercury Steam envisioned a remake of Metroid Fusion. This appears to have caught the attention of Yoshio Sakamoto, whose 2D Metroid series had long been in search of a new development team. Perhaps Mercury Steam could be his answer. In 2015, Mercury Steam, in collaboration with Nintendo's Entertainment Planning and Development Division, otherwise known as EPD, began work on a remake of Metroid 2, entitled Metroid Samus Returns. Jose Luis Marquez, who had directed Mirror of Fate, would serve as the creative director for Samus Returns. Marquez would ultimately become the face of Mercury Steam in relation to Samus Returns when he appeared alongside Sakamoto at the E3 2017 reveal of the game. While Samus Returns didn't set any records, it sold well for a late-era 3DS title, having released well after the Switch had established itself as a massive success. More importantly, it got Sakamoto thinking thinking about an idea for his long-awaited follow-up to Metroid Fusion, which had been sitting in limbo for close to two decades. Perhaps, with Mercury Steam, it was finally time for Metroid 5. As the opener of their E3 2021 presentation, Nintendo revealed Metroid Dread, a name which had lingered in the background of the Metroid fandom for 15 years. Due to a combination of technical limitations and company restructurings, Metroid Dread had been continuously on the back burner, as Sakamoto waited for the technology and the developers that were necessary to make his Metroid game. Mercury Steam would ultimately provide the resources he needed to finally make it happen. While we won't know for sure until we see the credits, it's widely speculated based on suspicious gaps in LinkedIn profiles that most of the major players in the development of Samus Returns are continuing their Metroid work for Dread. Following its announcement, Dread quickly became the most talked about Metroid title in history. In fact, based on Google Trends, it easily eclipsed the hype for even Metroid Prime 4. If all goes well, Mercury Steam seems to be set to be the go-to developer for 2D Metroid. But with Sakamoto stating that Metroid Dread will mark the end of this particular story arc, the possibilities are wide open for where it could go next. Will Mercury Steam return to their initial pitch of a Metroid Fusion remake, bring Samus Returns to Switch, or try something entirely new? One thing is for certain. Mercury Steam and Nintendo have revived 2D Metroid, and for now, it looks like both Samus and Mercury Steam are here to stay. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more, all for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.